Hey guys, Deborah here. Um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about um, what's happening in California and the fires. And um, I've said many times I'm Canadian, so I don't have like 100% knowledge of everything that's going on right now. But clearly you can just use the media and um, lots of different ways to know the truth and what's going on, as well as discernment and um, prayer. And so I just wanted to talk to you guys because I'm just noticing a really intense pattern of uh, you know, judgment. And I, um, I was researching to make sure are the fires, cause there always been fires in California. Are they getting worse? And yes, they are. And I will show you. And also the fact that, um, what is happening, like people are leaving California in droves and it's been happening for a couple years, but now it's happening at an alarming rate. And um, I, you know, I'm not saying, of course, that California is Babylon. I'm just giving an example of when there's judgment coming that, that you know, the Lord had said in his word. Well, I'll read Revelation 18, 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Now, I did a video a long time ago on my old channel about the fact that Manhattan means many hills. The name in Latin means many hills. And it's funny that, uh, you know, Babylon, I uh, shouldn't say funny, but it's interesting that Babylon sits on many hills or many mountains, or I think it's the whore. I don't have the exact verse, but sits on many mountains. So um, that's not what this is about, but it's very interesting that the name Manhattan in Latin actually does mean many hills. There's lots of debate. Is is uh, Babylon the United States? Is it Israel? Is it uh, Rome? You know, I'm, that's not what this video is about at all. So if that's your comment, I would say probably save it because I may do a video on it, but I'm not doing a video on that right now. And <clears throat> this is just about judgment. And even though this is talking about Babylon in Revelation 18, it is still to me related to what the Lord is saying. And I'm going to read you to, uh, at the end. Please stay tuned because the chapter I read at the end is crazily, it's impactful. It's huge. And even though you've probably read it before, when I read it, you'll just be like, whoa. And, um, you know, the earth will be rendered in fire. It's not going to be a watery destruction. And, um, yeah, like I said, I just wanted to do, like t uh, touch on how many articles right now are talking about people leaving California, not just people, conservatives. And you could say that's Christians, obviously they're not all Christians, but people of a certain mindset, values, whatever. So it is just one thing after the next. So I didn't think I could just let that pass. And anyway, yeah, so let's get into it. I'm just going to read one or two headlines or a few headlines and then and wrap it up shortly after that. So this one says California conservatives leaving the state for redder pastures. I'm not going to read the article, but that's the Los Angeles Times. And it's basically saying how many people this couple is going to Texas and why not just money, but also their values and what they're, um, you know, what they think California stands for now. Um, but money is a big part of it. Um, and then this one says 74% of conservative Californians are looking to leave the state. It says more than half of California voters have thought about moving out of the state, according to the new poll from the Institute of uh, Governmental Studies at UC Berkeley. So it says a full 70 percent of the state's very conservative voters say they're looking into moving. So um, that's a huge percentage. Seventy four percent are leaving or thinking of leaving. Texas likes that. As you see, this is a Texas article. Um, and then it says, Exodus, as Bay Area moves left, those conservative voters move out. Now, this is an older article. This was from March. But um, the word Exodus, I mean, th they're using biblical terms because I think everyone can feel that something is happening. So that's a biblical term right there. And in that same article, it says, Tag 69 sold his San Jose home and moved his family to Arizona in 2014. He used a simple calculation to justify it. 70% politics, 30% taxes. I'm a good old Republican, Tag said. I just saw the writing on the wall. Again, biblical terms. I saw the writing on the wall. And, um, you know, that that's from a different story <laughs> with regards to... Um, you know, uh, I can't remember which king it was who saw with Daniel and there was the writing on the wall basically saying his destruction was coming, coming near. So it was with regards to prophet Daniel. Anyway, another biblical thing. And then here, this is some proof. 2018 California wildfires. The 2018 wildfire season was the deadliest and most destructive wildfire season ever recorded in California, ever with a total of 
8,527 8, fires burning an area of, okay, well, I won't go into those stats, but basically if you go down, it says, um, as of December 21st, though the, uh, through the end of August, 2018, California fire alone spent 432 million on operations. And as of May, 2019 insurance claims, that was of May related to this fire season has reached one, sorry, has reached 12 billion, uh, most related to the campfire in uh, Butte County. I think that's how you say it. Anyway, regardless, look what it said. It said 2018 was the deadliest, yet now this, as of May, Wikipedia said, this is worse. This is more costly and more deaths. So is that not crazy? It's getting worse. It's this article, this is a recent article, October 30, says it's the end of California as we know it. The uh, This guy is basically saying he's a a California reg resident, lived there his whole life. Um, the fires and the blackouts are connected to a larger problem in this state, a failure to live sustainably. I mean, he's saying it's the end of California as we know it. Uh, what did I say? Come out of her, my people, <laughs> before judgment comes. And when I read that last chapter, when you hear it, you're just going to be like, whoa. And this article, this is what he says. Um, I've lived nearly all my life in California and my love for this place and its people runs deep and true. There have been many times in the past few years when I've called myself a Cali California nationalist. Sure, America seems to be going crazy, but at least I, and these are not probably Christians saying this, but at least I've lived in the golden state where things were still pretty chill. Yeah, right. But lately my affinity for my home state has soared. Maybe it's the smoke and the blackouts, but a very un-California, uh, Californian, okay, I don't know that word, has been creeping into my thinking. I'm starting to suspect we're over. It's the end of California as we know it. I don't feel fine. This is, I don't believe a Christian because if he's saying it was so chill and so great. I mean, he probably hasn't seen what's been going on for quite a while, but my point is he is seeing it. The non-Christians are seeing it. Am I wishing destruction on any person, place, people? No, but if you serve the Lord and you're willing to, um, you know, turn to him, he will, he will protect you. He will save you. And when you turn away from him, that there's there's no protection there, you know, you're under the wrath. And the problem too is that you are following a different master. We're slaves either to the Lord or the enemy. And the enemy says he's your friend, but he's definitely not going to protect you at all because that's the end result is hell, is fire. And so the only way to be protected is to be under the covering of the Lord, is to believe Jesus Christ is your savior, uh, you know, follow, just believe. And it's your heart that matters, but at the same time, uh, you know, many people say they believe and, you know, their fruits, you know, you will know them by their fruits. So, I mean, you know, you can't be fake either. The Lord's not going to be, you know, fooled. This was not meant to be long, but let me finish it off with the chapter or the Bible reading that I wanted to share. It is Second Peter 3. It's called the Day of the Lord. Like, seriously, this is, this is crazy and... Anyway, dear friends, this is now my second letter to you. I've written both of them as reminders to stimulate you to wholesome thinking. I want you to recall the words spoken in the past by the holy prophets and the command given by our Lord and Savior through your apostles. Above all, you must understand that in these last days, scoffers will come, scoffing and following their own evil desires. They will say, where is the coming of his promise? the coming he promised ever since and this will tie into the whole fire thing you'll see ever since our ancestors died everything goes on and it is as the beginning of creation but they deliberately forget that that long ago by god's word the heavens came into being and the earth was formed um, out of water and by water but these waters also the, by these waters also the world of that time was deluged and destroyed by the same word the present heavens and earth are reserved for fire being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. So it was first with water, now with fire. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. He doesn't want to render everyone in fire. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire and the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Am I saying the earth is being laid bare at this moment in California? No, I'm talking about these are signs. I'm talking about these are warnings, severe warnings. It's like they're severe. Um, it's been the worst. 2018 was the deadliest and 2019 is surpassing it. 
Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of the of God and speed its coming. The day will bring about the destruction that day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire, and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth with right, where righteousness dwells. Hallelujah. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, uh, blameless, and at peace with him. So be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. Make every effort. Obviously, you're just doing your best. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation, just as our dear brother Paul also wrote you with wisdom that God gave him. He writes the same way in all his letters, speaking in them of these matters. His letters contain some things that are hard to understand, which ignorant and and unstable people distort, as they do the other scriptures to their own destruction. Um, therefore, dear friends, since you have been forewarned, be on your guard so that you may not be carried away by the error of the lawless and fall from your secure position. Whoa. And fall from your secure position. Hmm. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. Whew, that's crazy. I mean, I've read this before, but as I'm just, the Lord's woken me up to the end times and um, understanding Bible prophecy. I mean, that's intense. That's, that's intense. Okay. There's so much layers to this. Whoa. But, you know, it says the elements will be destroyed with fire. It said it was first with water. It was created with water. Then now it will end with fire. Now, am I saying there's floods or it said in the end, there'll be all these things, but I'm saying Clearly, I hate to say it, but California is one of the most wicked states, par, you know, par, like around, not the, the maybe wickedest, but, or could be one of the, and I mean, this is just to me showing, it's increasing. If it wasn't increasing, and I would say it's always been this way. We have fires in Alberta where I live in Canada. So, you know, but it's increasing tremendously. And now you have these mass exoduses. People see the writing on the wall. This means destruction. So all I can say is, uh, you know, maybe reread that for yourself because that's insane and crazy and it is layered, real layered and telling you how to behave, you know, to not be, you know, taking a part with the, with the ungodly, having, you know, a part in this judgment. So um, you're saved by faith in Jesus Christ. That is how you are saved. Uh, and, you know, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved and those who call in the name of the Lord will be saved. But God will not be mocked. He's not going to be fooled. If you are faking it, there's you're you're out. There's no faking it. There's no fake pretending you believe. You you have to really believe. So anyway, I'm obviously preaching to the choir most likely. But I just wanted to share all that. I wanted to say it again, not just because I just want to stir up fear. I want to show you that there are real relevant signs that things are increasing hugely. I mean, so I mean, people are leaving. And, you know, if you're in that state, I would definitely pray about what the Lord would have you do. Maybe some people are to stay. I don't know. And I'm not saying that that they are Babylon. Once again, I'm not saying that, you know, that verse pertains to California. But what I'm saying is, you know, there is some key things that you have to realize when a judgment comes on a nation. You know, you need to ask the Lord, are you to stay or are you to go? Clearly, everybody knows that. But anyway, I, I think this was just really interesting that just article after article is saying the same thing. Non-Christians are saying California's ending as we know it. I did a recent video on a rabbi. It was like, I think Jerusalem Post said a rabbi had said, prophesied that that there was going to be some destruction in, in California because they are the uh, pornography capital of the world. That was one of my other videos I did on this channel. Anyway, regardless... I, the Lord says he wishes none to perish. That is why he's tearing. Um, but at the same time, his prophecies will come to pass. Not a word in Revelation will not come to pass. It, every word will come to pass. It will happen just as it says. So might as well be on the side, on God's side. So yeah, anyway, I'm sorry that that was a little, a bit of a downer, but I think it was just, it's, it's huge. It's news. And I mean, you know, at the same time, we're looking forward to a new heaven and earth. That is after the thousand year reign that the heavens and earth will be completely destroyed and there'll be a new heaven and a new earth. But first this world will be, I'm sure cleaned up in some way, whatever at his second coming, but then the full rendering of, he of in fire of heaven and earth, the full, full, these are all precursors, the full, um, you know, um, fulfillment of that prophecy will happen at the very end of the age. 
But we just wait for the Lord, uh, you know, we wait for the trumpet sound to be caught up with him and forever be with the Lord. And uh, yeah, so that's all. Hope you enjoyed the video and got some information. Reread that chapter. I mean, it's layered. There's so much to learn from it. And um, yeah, we will talk again soon. Have a super blessed day or evening. God bless and shalom.